I graduated from university about a year ago now. I don't like saying that out loud. Isn't time horrible? <laughs> <laughs> and just like that. I remember in our first week of university, we sort of played a lot of hide and seek, which was kind of nice. It was a nice way to get to know people who were in a similar position to you. MJ, you can't hide on the ceiling like that. MJ, you can't. I've got to hide. MJ, good luck, good luck. Ben and Tree can't find anywhere to hide you. He stayed in there. No. <laughs> I was looking at footage the other day as well, and we went on a walk in our first month. And it was just, I'm just watching these strangers at the time, just desperately trying to form any kind of connection through the creative medium of puns. Go, go. Uh, conquer your fears. Oh, oh no! I think we've just all planned to kill Ray. Oh, here we go. Should we erase him? Oh, oh no! no! They're getting better! They're getting better! I think we've literally just travelled back in time now. And then three years later, you feel like you can be a bit more honest. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that could have been funny. Should I say proper goodbye this time? No, of course. He loves you, Miles. I love you, Miles. See you later. Bye. Have fun. Enjoy America. See you soon. It's nice living yeah, with you. Both of you. Nice you work your way down from that ceiling in the dark onto a train platform, waving goodbye. I think we should see other people. <laughs> Didn't even know any of those guys. Nice of them to place a card. And that's just sort of what I like to do, you know? I love to remember. I know it's not good to look back as well. After a while, you know, I spend so much time trying to put things that have happened into words that I feel like and maybe I'm just living on delay and I'll never actually sort of begin because I'm just trying to catch up on the things I haven't yet spoken about. But looking back is not this is looking back <coughs> it's not good where he's looking forward oh fuck it's just a strange old time life after university you know you go from all that freedom sex drugs um, to then listing things you never did or had but for now I'm back in the old childhood bedroom all the memories. It's the same bed I slept in as a child, a young, hopeful, uh, wide-eyed little boy. Only figuratively wide-eyed, obviously wouldn't get much sleep. Just dreaming up all the dreams I now wake up from and uh, try to keep alive. Oh, it's good. My calendar as well back at home. Um, I got a Tigger one. Be happy, be you. Every month there's a new picture of Tigger with a fun and inspirational quote next to it. I was like, that's good. That's what I'll need to keep me going. What's he saying this month? I'd rather be in bed. Because I know this part of life, it won't be easy. You know, you just gotta work hard, stay positive, never get sad and you'll be happy forever. It's that simple. I got a rejection letter from a job the other day and it made me so happy even though it was saying I didn't get it because at least it was like finally a reply from someone. If I get taken hostage next week, I think I'm just going to appreciate being held. I think that's what Tigger said in July. You know, I'm not good enough or I'm not going to make it. You can't entertain those worst fears, otherwise you start to see them everywhere. And 
and then you find yourself looking at what everyone else is doing. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. Massive. Oh, my God. Massive. That made me feel bad about myself. Yeah. Massive. And it's hard not to do that, you know, compare yourself. Because everyone goes at their own pace, you know. God, is this just a bit inspirational or is that me? You shouldn't compare yourself, man, to other people, dude. Um, especially after uni. Like social media, guys. <sighs> Remember when we used to hold hands? Now we just hold our phones. Why aren't I happy? You type into a burning hot machine at 4 a.m. Oh god, I don't am I I don't kind of tell if I'm crying or just laying horizontally. It is odd though when you see like I checked on Facebook the other day. People I went to school with have kids that are older than me now, and I'm just sort of over here. On the arrogantly deleting apps side of my 20s, I need to then reinstall Tinder the next week. All the hot topics, please. And everyone's married as well, aren't they? On, on Facebook, everyone's married. And they're, all, they're all getting married. I don't know if anyone else has seen that. On Facebook, everyone's married. They're all saying, oh, I can't believe I'm marrying my best friend. And like, what does your girlfriend think about that? They're all married. At university, a lot of people end up meeting the person they'll eventually like marry, which is really nice. You know, I met my life partner. Uncertainty. Yeah! <laughs> Gonna put my head out the window and just get some fresh air. Oh, that's good. You just gotta stay focused. An hour long video on how to escape quicksand. Alright, I'll just give that a quick watch. Oh, fuck. So although not much has happened, I will share you the one day from the last year that has the most uh, narrative interest. I nearly died. Clickbait? Could it be? Obviously yes. Um, but maybe not in the sense that we we're all nearly dying. And maybe that was just a little bit deep. I woke up on a Tuesday, I think it was. Could have been a Wednesday. Um, doesn't greatly affect the story, if I'm honest, what day it was. Could have possibly even been a Saturday. I do want to get this right. It was a Friday. It was a Friday. I woke up. I went into the bathroom, I placed my hands on the sink and then I fainted and had a little fit. That's an anecdote. And what was worse was when the ambulance, there was an ambulance, when the ambulance turned up, I was still in my pyjamas, just laying on the floor, and it was 1pm, um, and they were like, oh, you been out partying last night then? <laughs> Sorry, I thought I replied. No, I'm just sad. And what was bad about that experience um, was that I think I was probably ready to die. Like, it was such a painful experience. This is still the vlog, by the way, guys. I don't think the camera's just off and I'm now just talking to myself. It was painful to an extent where I was genuinely like, yeah, death would make sense after this. I feel like this is the appropriate level of pain to end in me no longer being alive. I was rationalising it, which is kind of bad that I didn't really put up a fight. I mean, I had just woken up. To be fair, it was a lot. Yeah, I was entirely made out of glass at one point and I had 12 eyes. I went to the hospital and had some blood tests um, and long story short, which is what they could have said if I hadn't have made it, absolutely, you've got to keep a good sense of humour with these sort of things. You've got to zing your way out of the darkness. Yeah, just have a B12 deficiency. After all of that, just low iron because I'm a vegetarian or as the doctor put it on my form, vegetarian and worsening. A lot of meat has B12 in it, and because I'm a vegetarian, but I don't have much of it. But not every single vegetarian is fainting and just collapsing on the floor outside of a salad place. I was trying to think of a specific place vegetarians hang out. So I'm just a shit vegetarian. So I had a few more checkups and the doctor kind of suggested obviously improve my diet and then maybe even start having more fish. Become a pescatarian. The slippery slope back to meat. That was all on the form. So for health reasons, you know, I am back on the fish. And it's very difficult now, living life as a pescatarian. I'm just sort of coming to terms with it, you know, previously being a vegetarian, because it makes no sense being a pescatarian, because I feel like technically I am still a vegetarian, but then it's just like, oh, I'd never harm an animal. I'd never, never harm an animal unless it can swim, then I will kill everything in the ocean. I'm a pescatarian, I'll just eat one animal. It sounds like you've got a vendetta. Bruce Willis is the pescatarian. But I still have a moral compass. It's pointing me to all the fish. Us peskies, we got it tough. Got to change the name. So I walked out of that doctor's appointment and I was thinking, why am I fine being a pescatarian now? You know, I looked back into my life, what events have happened that have shaped this decision, and I kept looking back. Before I was even born, I went back a million years ago, I went too far, to the point where life was bubbling in the sea and eventually crawled out of the oceans onto the beaches to become life. When that first fish got the idea out of the blue to create humanity, I, I know a fish, I know we aren't fish. I am cutting out some integral parts of evolution. But maybe that's why I'm a pescatarian. I just wish those first fish had thought about 
you know, what they'll actually be doing, all of this, and maybe think, well, guys, is this what we actually want? And eventually one of those fish would evolve, and I'd be here. And that's why I'm a pescatarian. I eat fish because I hate myself. Lo a lot to think about. A lot to think. We g sink the sound. It is all fine now, though. Don't worry about it. I just have to get injected every three months in the head. Um, I feel quite guilty in aquariums. And you know, guys, that really got me thinking. You know, I still got more to give. That really woke me up. I started running soon after that. I stopped and bloody knackered. That happened eight months ago. <laughs> Look at life. Green. Green leaves. It's not a song. Beautiful, thick nature. Because I'm still young, you know? I'm young, optimistic, um, beyond reason. There's no need to be this optimistic. There's, there's proof. <laughs> You've got to keep your head up, guys. I am being sincere. Started going to yoga classes recently to form some sort of, you know, mind body connection. Cause I don't know where either of those are at the minute. I got big into this um, app. Oh, sure. You know, mindfulness and that sh uh, shit is the technical term. And it was really good, but it just constantly kept popping up with notifications asking if I was living in the moment. I was like, yes, I am, but by the time I've checked it, the moment's bloody escaped me, and I'm tw like 12 moments behind. And then after that, even after I turned them off, they just kept popping up. So I wasn't living in the moment for ages, I was just in the settings. When you closed it as well, it came up with a little message just saying, all you have is the moment. I was like, yeah, that's nice. Um, when my parents were my age though, they had like a house. I want to talk to you guys now about something. Two years ago, VidCon 2016, big old YouTube event. I was invited and I've been wanting to go to VidCon. That has been like my dream ever since like I started YouTube from the age of 13. This is fully insane. Everyone's out partying and I've clogged the bloody toilet. Green skin, look at me, babe, I'm really good. You know you got to have and at that point in my life, in 2016, I didn't know that I wasn't going to make a YouTube video for two years. Already at that event, I felt almost a little bit out of place because I hadn't made a YouTube video for six months. So I already felt that sort of distance outside of that video maker definition. For context, I made a long, an hour and a half vlog focusing on life in those two years. Um, so I didn't make a YouTube video for two years. And I don't want to, when I say like about the past, I want to, I don't want to forget it and like, like move on. Like I'm being a bit rude to the past and the past is over here going, oh brother. You t yeah, slam the door on his way out sort of thing. That's not what I want. I just want to sort of know that I can be more than I was. But I think I learned a lot. It's in LA, uh, VidCon, the city of angels. Uh, if it is, I don't want to go to heaven. It's a big old car park. It's just all a car park. It's just one long grey bit of road. It's lovely. And there's a second channel video. Um, I have a second channel, guys. And if, you know, you're watching this in 60 years, um, I have a second channel, guys. There's a second channel video I made where I, it's called Owls. I did a little song and then at the end, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to VidCon. I'm taking my laptop with me on the plane because I'm really hoping to finish editing this video I've been working on. Two years later, how bloody long was that plane ride? It just kept growing and the more life that was lived, the more things I wanted to talk about until it just got bigger and bigger. That's the thing, when do you put a full stop on something and go, right, those are all the things I'm going to talk about. Oh no, the door of life is open and just more, more, more and more experiences are coming in. Now I've got to talk about all of this, you know, like that. And I'm so like insanely happy that I, I, I finished that and actually completed it. And I never thought it would get done, but at the same time, I never thought I would give up, which is a strange sort of feeling to sort of live in for two years and just everyone yeah for for watching that and commenting on that yeah thank you so much because um yeah i can't there's bloody loud dogs over there yeah i can't um yeah <laughs> yes it words yeah i didn't think it would get done and it is and everyone it like i thought everyone would not like it and so many people were so nice about it um so thank you and I don't want to forget that I did that, you know, that I, that I worked really f hard on that. And that, you know, however tough, you know, trying to get to where you are is at the minute, you just got to, you can't give up. Even if it feels like you, know, you don't think you'll ever get it finished, don't even consider it never getting done. Okay.
can probably put, put some music over that. I went to the Hollywood Walk of Fame as well. Bizarre place that. People putting hands in hands. Seeing all your characters. I was in the toilet in LA. The toilets in LA. Toilets, but in LA. Los Angeles toilet. Harry Potter was in the toilet next to me. Not Daniel Radcliffe. I mean, maybe Daniel Radcliffe. I didn't sort of pay enough attention to see. Yeah, 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 you're Daniel. Bizarre. Mad land, really. But yeah, overall that was... I feel like that's a good starting point. Um, even though that was two years ago, and since then, I've only really been working on my long old video. I feel like in terms of feelings of knowing where I can go and what I can do, and yeah, I went to the I went to Venice Beach as well, thinking I could walk there. It took me five hours from my hotel. I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I had my laptop with me in the hotel, so I got it on Google Maps in my hotel room and took a JPEG image of it on my phone, and then for five hours was just zooming in and following the directions on one image. For five hours. I asked this lady about two hours in, excuse me, am I walking the right way to Venice Beach? And she said, oh Christ. So that was, that didn't sit well with me. But I got there, you know, awful, not a good place. But I got there. It's all about the journey, isn't it? You know, um, life, obviously, because the destination is death, really. Ow! I don't know where Venice Beach is, but I think it's around here. So I'm going to try and uh, so try and find it. Yeah, it's just let's go up here. Like as soon as you see sea like that, like I know if I just keep walking in that direction, eventually with sea there will be beach. <laughs> and I had fun just walking, you know. Um, just gotta do the best with what you can. When life gives you lemons. Shit.